And it's like you're grinding out reps, like you're here and you're grinding reps. You're, ah! Ah! It's like, all right, guys. You guys want to blow up your back? Saw I blow my back up. You want a mass building back workout? Try this. You want bulging lats? You want Tyrannosaurus tra traps? You guys want lats like Dorian Yates? With half the work and half fucking genetics? You want to figure out how to not work hard, get big? You want this is the shortcut channel. There's a lot of people that have shoulder issues. I obviously have shoulder issues. I'm getting my replaced in like two weeks. But even along, the, even with having all those shoulder issues, I've never in my life reverse grip bench. Like, and I don't know where people get like, it's like, it's like an automatic, it becomes an automatic hack. Like people are like, oh, I have shoulder problems. Now I bench reverse grip bench rest and all my shoulder pain went away. It's like, do you guys understand why that's happening? It's because you're finally sort of being taught how to press properly because you're forcing, you're forcing your chest, like your shoulders down and your elbows tucked and pulling your shoulders back when you press. You're not doing this shit anymore. That's all it is. But if you literally did this position that you held a dumbbell, it's the same thing. And it's a lot more, you have a lot more power and it's a lot less, lot less like awkwardness on the press out because our arms aren't really meant to press out like this. This is more of like a scooping position, like underhanding stuff is like, it's very hard to drive weight out of this position. You know what I mean? So I, didn't, I guess it works for them because they, a lot of guys, well, I've seen guys who can bench a shit ton of weight with that, with that positioning, but a lot of guys will have to, they'll be forced to lower the weight. So one, they're, they're pressing in a better position because they're ret learning to retract shoulders and tuck into the lat and push through hand. And chest lift is like going to be minimized because as you see, when you take this off, there's no weight. I'm not about to do any fucking weight on this. But if I take this off of the grip, that's this inverted or reverse grip here and I pull in, all this is happening is this. So I'm not going to be able to stay here and go, I have to pull in like I preach on pressing and I have to drive out. So I have to pull in and I have to press out. As you can see, when I get here, I flatten out. It's hard to stay arched because it makes my shoulder angle weird. So I have to almost flatten out and then push up through. I have to stay as flat as I can. So my body basically flattens out as well. And I push up. I can't stay in this arch position and pull down here and then press out again. I think I can do it, but it's fucking more difficult than just benching properly, right? So it is a decent hack, but it's like you guys have to understand if your movement sucks, it's still going to be bad. And if your movement just gets better on regular pressing, which will lead to our next topic, you don't need to change the grip. You just need to change the elbow position and the chest lift. So my grip doesn't matter. My grip could be here, 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 wherever I want it to be. I just need to get to this position so I'm stop doing this position and stop jerking and pressing over shoulders and just using my, I'm using my appendages, my arms just, just to move weight, which is like I saw a couple of kids in here yesterday. This is no, by no means making fun of those kids because it just triggered me because you see this all the time. Like you walk into any gym anywhere in the world and see this happening in a dumbbell area. So these guys had their, I'm doing it here one, they had the fucking incline bench at like, probably here. Literally. Like, yeah, it made them in here. Here, 35. It was fucking high. Let's put it this way. If I do an incline press, this is, this is my incline press angle. Right there. I'll never go higher than that. I don't see why you would. You can't get your shoulders back. So if I'm here, now I'm like borderline. I'm front delt and chest, right? So... This guy, let's show it the baby weights. So these guys were here. I don't even know if they had the bottom part of the seat properly angled. They were just laying back. They had 150s or whatever the fuck it was. And these guys were like getting amped up in here and like rocking. And then the kickback is like, they kick it up here and they're way open. They're way out here. So as you can see, my depth is nothing. So they're way out here and they're pushing around. They're just controlling to this sticking point. Pushing around, pushing around. It's just like flexing, maybe getting a little more drop because I can't get as much drop as these guys, but they're getting like two inches worth of drop. It's like, you guys realize that's not doing shit for you, right? Uh, it's just like, I'm on an angle here where I'm pressing. I'm just pushing my arm around. 
So I can see a little bit of chest here, and then it dies. And it's just arm and tricep press, shoulder press. So I'm catching a little bit of outer pec. When I get this extension, that just pulls the outer pec again, pushes. It never carries across the pec. I never get a full contraction in my pec. Because one, the angle's too fucking high. Yes, you're going to be stronger in that angle because you've turned it into a shoulder press. So you're pressing, you're strong. You guys are more likely, because you are so shoulder dominant, to be, very, to be a lot stronger when your shoulder's involved in a lift than when it's not. So if you can get your shoulder involved somehow and pin on it and just like flex elbow out off, your, off this tight shoulder and just extend elbow all the time, like think that you're pulling in, but like even me pulling in here is like, look at my range. It's not like this. That's depth, right? This is not depth. Point to here. I'm not, I'm not even aligned with my chest. I'm not breaking parallel with my chest at all. There's no, my hand isn't below my chest line, right? Which I need. I at least need to spend a second there and come out of there. I can't just, and just push through, right? So it's the same thing. If you do this properly, ooh, you want to do an incline press. One, you guys have to realize, like you said before, this carries into grip positioning. If I'm going to kick back and I'm going to be on an incline where my shoulders can get involved and I want to limit their involvement, I need to kick back and I need to sit here and I need to relax into my depth. So my chest is up, my elbows are pulled in, and my hand is flat. My shoulders are tucked down. I'm not here. You know what I mean? I'm rolled up as high as I can get my chest and my weight's sitting on my palm, relaxed. So I can move, move through things. So I shove weight into the bench, squeeze. So when I come down, it's the same thing. I'm not gonna rush it. I'm gonna let the weight sit into my body, pull into my lats, drive out. Drive. The heavier it gets, the slower and the more controlled that process is gonna be, right? So we're not gonna, it's, these guys get these heavy weights that you're have learned nothing yet you've you're still thinking heavier makes me bigger it's like okay you get that heavy weight and then you rapid fire it tick, 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 tick. Brrr, get the fucking thing don't worry about what's squeezing just feel a little bit of contraction here or there but just overall manhandle the weight which is like we've said in the past if you're moving a load and you're training with resistance and and, and stress and intensity you'll put on muscle but those guys stand up and they have severely overdeveloped shoulders and like underdeveloped chest. And they have made up like a great tricep from it. But their body is defunct. It's like, it's all out of whack, man. It's like, yeah, you can keep taking this path where it's like, yeah, my weights are going up. So therefore I'm getting better. Boy, you can be honest, look in the mirror and be like, I have no chest. I bench a shit ton of weight because I'm pressing all these dumbbells and barbells and heavy weights. But I literally don't have a chest to speak of. If you see that in the mirror and that's you that I'm describing, you need to change what you're doing. And that's not like, oh, now I just bench underhand so I get more, I get more drive through my chest. It's like, no, because you're still doing the underhand thing wrong. Because you're still setting up the way we set up here and you're here, but now you're on the underhand and you're just pinched into neck and shoulders, pushing out. Like the, the whole lifting of the sternum and like rolling elbows down and tucking down I can't sit up now if I try. That's why I have to wiggle. I have to awkwardly get out of here because I'm fucking so arched. Like I'm literally pinned, pinned back in the seat, right? If you can lay down a bench and go like this and get up right away, you didn't arch enough. There's no need. There's no way you could. Especially if I weight in my hand and I can wiggle myself down into like a position here. I can push my head and move my body and tuck in my traps. This is super uncomfortable. Like this is, this is a position for power for lifting and getting and locking down. I wouldn't want to be here forever, but I can hold a lot of weight here and I can move a shit ton of weight because I'm locking through my body and shoving, right? Whereas you guys like one asshole fucking fits up one and the other one hands you a dumbbell and then you're like, ah, ah, it's like, I train people, I train every day. I train people like that. Like. Weekly, I train people like that. They come in and they start benching. I'll be like, they'll get, they'll get their fucking brain blown out by fucking the fact that they're doing everything else wrong. And then they'll come here. I'll be like, let me see you dumbbell press. And I can see them. They're looking for a weight. But by that time, they're like, I don't know if I can do the weight that I normally do. So I'll be like, grab a 30. Like, this could be a 200. This could be a fucking like 250 pound guy. 
grab a 30, grab a 50, whatever. Grab, grab a mediocre mid-range weight. Show me how you move. And it's fucking, as soon as you twist them into that position, get them to relax at the bottom, hold tension at the bottom of a dumbbell press, their body freaks the fuck out. And it's, and it's like, they're not used to not just rapid firing. Find my range where I am strong, move the weight as hard as I can. Grunt, scream, do all this shit that everyone does in here for the camera. It's like, a failure shouldn't look like that. I don't know who's decided that it should look like that. Other than if you're squatting, like, I'm talking like, you're doing reps for seven plates on each side. Or fucking, you know what I mean? Like, I'm talking moving a load and moving it, like, crazy well and doing high reps. And you're having to, like, grind out reps that are just, this sound is just innately coming out of you because your body's like, what the fuck, right? Right? It's like, you guys are kicking back fucking dumbbells and doing dumbbell presses. And it's like, you're grinding out reps. Like, you're here and you're grinding reps. You're, ah! You're, ah! It's like, you're doing that all for fucking attention. That's not real. Like, and just because you put so much perceived intensity into it doesn't mean that it's working more. Just because you grunted and you fucking really tried hard and you squeezed as hard as you could, it doesn't mean you're getting better reps. Like, I don't know who the fuck needs to tell you guys that, but 